In this tutorial we're going to go over how to read the node graph. So let's start with the nodes themselves. If a node has square edges like this, that means it's a 2D node. Any nodes with round edges or completely round are 3D nodes. Nodes with both left and right side being pointy or sharp like that, that's a group. And then a gizmo has square at the left and pointy at the right. So now let's have a look at the color chips. So you can see the color chips run across the bottom of this node here. So what I'm going to do to illustrate what they are, I'm going to use a remove channel node, but I'm going to set that to keep, and I'm going to set that to RGB. I'm going to view that. Now what we can see here is that we've just kept RGB, and that's, that's reflected here. So I've got red, green, blue. So then if I was to get rid of the green and the blue, you can see I've only got the red chip there. So that's saying I've only got the red channel, you can see only the red channel and also red in between the brackets. So if I now go to alpha, you can see that I've got the white chip here which is corresponding to here and also alpha is in between the brackets here. Then if I move on to depth, that's the grey chip which is the grey chip here. Then motion is um, magenta, cyan, yellow and white and then motion can be split foot into forward and then oh, backward as well. So that's what all those chips mean there. But those chips can give us a little bit more information. So if we look here at this bezier, at the moment, let's double click this bezier so we can see what we're doing, it's outputting into alpha. So we can see here that the alpha chip is of the full size, like these ones here, and all the other chips are of a third size. So what that's telling us is this bezier is operating on the alpha channel and all these other channels are passing through. So if I was to change this to say RGB, we can see that red, green and blue are now fat, everything else is thin. And then here with the grade, we can see that I'm actually operating on the depth channel and that's why the depth is fat. Now we're going to look at the labeling a little bit closer. So here, what this is here, this is telling us that we've got an internal mask. So if we look at the label here, it's saying that RG and B is being affected, so we can see that they're fat, and they've been internally masked by channel 1 from the layer set Robo ID. So if we look here, let's uh, get rid of that Bezier. So we can see that we've multiplied, and Robo ID 1 is actually the, the mat for that center robot there. So that's the same as having reading in those mats and those mats here we can see if we look that it's the green channel so we've got the grade here and we've now masked it by the green channel with a side input mask so just the same ones internally and ones from the side but they're doing the same thing next up we've got uh, unpre multiplied by so if we look here we've got this color correct here so if we go down here, we can see that the, that unpre multiply checkbox has been checked and we've chosen alpha from the drop down. So that's the same as here saying unpre multiply by alpha, do the color correction and then pre mop. Right. Animation. So if we do, double click here, we can see that the gain animates over time and that's what that animation knob there is for or letting us know. Now we've come to this uh, E in the green circle, that's saying expression. So if we double click this uh, blur and then press equals while over the size knob, we can see that it's got the expression frame. So that's just going to give us the frame number as a result. Okay, now expression linking. So here, what we've got is we've got transform one and then transform two. So I'll have a look at them at the same time. We can see that. Transform 1 is driving Transform 2. So if I move the rotation on Transform 1, Transform 2 is linked via an expression. And so that expression arrow is saying this one, arrow pointing, is driving that one. So you can also turn this off with Alt-E and that gets rid of the expression arrows. Now onto clones. So we can tell this is a clone because we've got this orange circle with the C in it. And we've also got this orange line here. All clones are equal in Nuke, there's no hierarchy or parenting, so if I make a change to this grade or to that grade, it's going to be exactly the same. 
So should we do that? Let's change the gamma of this one. So let's view this one. So I'm going to hit one there. I'm viewing it. I'm going to turn the gamma down there. And now if I look at this one here with the two, you can see that the gamma's also turned down. If I double click that one and then change the gamma back up, they change. So it doesn't matter if I change it from here or here. We can also get rid of the clone arrow with the same hotkey, Alt-E, so like that. And now back. Okay, so let's clear this out. And now down to here. So this cross here is saying that this merge has been disabled. So if we double click that, we can see that here in the node panel, disable's been uh, checked. Also the hotkey for that is D. One thing to note is that the disable when it's a merge is going to disable the A pipe and the B will run through. So if we look here, we see we can see the checkerboard and then if I enable, we're going to see the robots as well. So the disable will disable this A pipe here. We can also see a disable that will have um, a single line. So if we go back here, we can see that this single line disable means that it's been disabled by an expression. So if I double click this over and then right click here, edit expressions, move this up. So this expression here is saying if time is less than 150 then invoke. So if we look at the frame 146 the disable is active and then past 150 it's inactive. Okay clear that bin out, move on. So the last one here is this cross here. So what this cross here is saying is, if I double click this one, is that this mix parameter has been invoked. So if I go like that you can see it disappears, if I go like that it's active and you can see also if you look at this pipe here that it's showing you that that is the one that it's mixing back so if we now look at this you can see that it's basically fading back the A pipe but maybe you might pick up a comp and it'd be like that and you'd feel that you wouldn't know what's going on just look for that cross and that's going to give you a hint